So the author said, Fasl section. Wa min ma'asi lisan. And among the sins of the tongue is al ghiba gossip, or what some people call backbiting. Well, here, and it is, as defined by the Prophet himself, alayhi salatu was salam, dhikruka akhaka al Muslim, you're mentioning your brother Muslim, yani your fellow Muslim, you're mentioning your fellow Muslim. Bima yakrahu with what he dislikes. Mimma fihi among among what is in him. That means among what is true about him. Among what is in him, fihi, yani among what is true about him. He doesn't like it. It's true about him, and he doesn't like for you to say it. Fi khalfihi in his absence, yani behind him. Fi khalfihi, behind him. That means in his absence. Khalf means behind. So as they say, behind his back. Uh, so mentioning your fellow Muslim with what he dislikes to be mentioned about him Though it is true, and he's absent. Uh, so what about in his face? Would it be permissible then? Uh, not if that hurts him. It's not permissible to say hurtful words unrightfully. So you can't say to his face, you know, brother, you stink. You know, you smell pretty bad, and et cetera, et cetera. Though I'm not talking about the parents, though. Sometimes the parent will... Uh, scold the child. Not in that case, they're saying something to the one's face. Zikruka akhak al Muslim bima yakrahu. With what he dislikes. Like saying he's tall if he doesn't like that. Or he's short. Or. He smells, or he's fat, or his wife controls him, or his kids don't have manners, or his house is dirty, or he's a trash man, etc. Take those examples and be mindful what you say about a Muslim. Be mindful. This one is easy sin to fall into. Even for brothers. Even for the men, that's an easy one. One namima and tailbearing, or what some might call instigating. Which is wahia, and it is naklul qawl, conveying what was said. Transmitting what was said. That means going back and forth between sayers. Telling them what each said. Lil if sad for corruption. For making trouble. For ruin. In my growing up they called that instigating. You say even if it's true. You're talking about conveying words between them even if it's true. Yeah, even if it's true. What tahrish, I'm not sure the best way to translate that, might also be instigating. Min ghayri naqli qawl, without conveying what was said. Like even by gestures. Walau bain al bahaim, even between animals, like making dogs fight or rams or chickens. Wal kavib and lying. 
wa huwa and it is al kalam bi khilaf al waqi' talk that is against reality that is different from reality speech that is against that is different from al waqi' reality yani what actually happened Sometimes that's a small sin, sometimes that's a big sin. Lying to make people laugh. That's a major sin, that's a big sin. You know who's a Muslim? You can make the offer him. Dave Chappelle. Make the offer him. May Allah have mercy on him and help him and protect him. I mean. Yeah, make the offer Mike Tyson too. May Allah Ta'ala help him and enable him to die on belief. Ameen. Major sin, yes. No. Lying while joking. Lying to make people laugh is a major sin. That's, that's what I said. Lying to make people laugh is a major sin. Question, is ghiba only for Muslims? Uh, so if your question is is it haram only for Muslims then yes the answer is yes Amin Wafiq subhanallah that one uh, Dave Chappelle I never ever ever heard him say kufr in any of his stand up subhanallah the author says Swearing to a lie. Swearing to a lie. Like, yani, yameen. Yameen means the right. As opposed to the yasar, the left. So when you swear, you raise your right hand. I swear. That's your yameen. Your swear. Al yameen ul kathibah. The lying swear. The lying swear. So someone lies and he says, Wallahi, I swear by Allah. That's a major sin. Not kufr. It's not kufr. That's different from saying, though, While lying, Allah knows I'm telling the truth. That's kufr. Or to say while lying, Allah is my witness that I'm telling the truth. That's kufr. But just saying, wallahi, I swear by Allah, and one is lying, that's not kufr, that's a major sin. And the expressions of Qadhf. Qadhf means Rami, throwing. And this sin we're talking about now, you can call it Qadhf, throwing. And you can call it Rami, throwing. And that means accusing someone of fornication. Yani throwing one into fornication by your accusation, that is. Al Qadif. Wa al Fadul Qadif. The expressions of accusing someone of fornication. Wahiya kathira. And they are many. Like to say, you fornicator. That's haram. Hasiluha, their summary is Kulu Kalimatin Tansubu insanan O Wahidan min Korobetihi ila zina. Every word, Kalima, every word. that attributes a person or one of his relatives to fornication like to say you bastard if you said to him you bastard you're saying your mother is a fornicator 
Your mother's a fornicator. You were born out of wedlock. So that's an expression of kavif. Every word that attributes a person or one of his relatives to fornication is qadhf. That's an accusation. That's a qadhf for who it was, to who was attributed to it. Either explicit, absolutely Like he says, you fornicator. Or, oh, Kinayatan. Or indirectly. Indirectly. Biniya. With an intention. So either explicitly, absolutely, absolutely, mutlakan means regardless of your intention, the fact that you said it was enough when it was explicit. Oh, kinayatan, or indirectly, biniya, with an intention. Like, you, you wicked one, for example, or you sinner, but he means you fornicator. So there, Hadi, that uh, answers your question. If someone calls someone a prostitute, either that's explicit or that's indirect. Or whore, for example, or something like that. Or a hoe. Or many, many, many words, like Sheikh said, those many, many, many words. Some of the older generations, they had words like a hussy or a Jezebel, or all kinds of stuff. You said, is the common statement here, mother effer, also included? Uh, it could be. That one, it could be. Because the F word is used to me, refer to sexual intercourse. So someone could be calling a person an, an effer, and he means that what we're talking about now question would it be sinful even if they were one yes it's haram you, you cannot do it you cannot do that without bayina without bayina, without evidence, which is going to be four male witnesses who saw his organ in her organ. So it's not enough to see them coming out of the house together or to hear them behind the door making sounds or to see them under a cover, even if they're moving. You cannot call them that. He said, if there was only one witness and if he starts relying that, relaying that message, he would receive the punishment? Yes. Yes. You said he's a witness, didn't you? That means it's true, isn't it? So, he's, he's, so if he's a witness, one witness, and then he went and he said that, they will whip him. The proper authorities, of course. وَيُحَدُّ الْقَاضِفُ الْحُرُّ ثَمَانِينَ جَلْدَةِ And the Qadif, the thrower, the accuser, is يُحَدُّ, he is punished with the capital punishment. الْحُرُّ, when he's free, الْقَاضِفُ الْحُرُّ, the free accuser, is punished you had do thamanina jalda 80 lashes 80 lashes the whip they use by the way is not uh, it's not like the whip that they used for slaves in America that bull whip that long bull whip not like that something 
much less. It's painful, but not like that. And the slave is yuhaddu, is punished with the capital punishment. Nisfaha, half of that, which is 40, 40 lashes. Except the parent. The parent, if the accuser is a parent, then this parent is not punished for that. It's still haram, though. It's a lot of fitna. Saying those things cause lots of fitna. Lots of fitna. Just take a look at uh, Jerry Springer's show and uh, those types of things. Maureen, all of that stuff. Lots of fitna. Waminha sabbu sahaba. And among them, the sins of the tongue, is insulting the companions. All of them. That's blasphemy. That's what he means here. When he says sabbu sahaba, he means insulting all of them. That's blasphemy. Insulting some of them, if they are pious, then that's haram, not blasphemy. And false testimony. And false testimony. Why the parent is not punished, I haven't learned why. Shahada to Zur. Shahada means testifying. The Zur is a lie, false testimony. Yani, perjury. And that's a major sin. Wa matlul ghani. And the procrastination of the solvent. So, al ghani means rich or wealthy. Al matl is the procrastination. Matl al ghani. This refers to the one who has a debt, and he's able to pay it. That's what's meant by being ghani here. He's able to pay his debt. Matlul ghani, yani the procrastination of the solvent one who has a debt. A meaning ta'khiru daf'i dain. Delaying the payment of the debt. Ma'aghina, despite his wealth. A, meaning, maqudirati, meaning, despite his ability to pay. What if he can't pay? Can you find him? No, that's riba. Uh, can you uh, harass him? No, you can't do that either. So what can you do if he can't can't pay? You can all you can do is give him a grace period. That's obligatory. That means you give him more time. That's obligatory. Washatmu and insulting walanu and damning or cursing walistihza'u and uh, making fun of or belittling bil muslim the muslim unrightfully that is wa kullu kalamin mu'zin lah and every harmful talk Yani every talk that harms him. 
Uh, Shetum, that's like saying, you donkey. That's a major sin. And that's not the worst thing you can say. And that's a major sin. Latin is like saying, damn you. And lying on Allah. That's haram. Wa'ala rasulihi. And lying on his messenger. That's haram. But if that lying involves deeming something lawful or unlawful, it's kufr. If that lying involves deeming something lawful or unlawful, so you're lying about the rule, that's kufr. But if you lied and said, uh, the messenger of Allah said such and such, and it's a lie, that's haram, it's not kufr. According to the correct saying, that much is not kufr, that's haram, major sin. The one who lies on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He doesn't commit kufr Just by that Like if he said The messenger of Allah said such and such And he didn't say it That's haram It's not kufr mm, I don't have any details there But among those who said that's not kufr Is Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani One scholar said that's kufr to, basically, the rule is fabricating a hadith is haram. It's not kufr by itself. Just without the detail about halal or haram, just only merely fabricating a hadith, that's haram, major sin. One scholar said that's kufr. And the correct saying that that's not kufr, it's haram. Uh, yeah, that's the father of Imam al Haramain, Al Juwaini, the father. He's the one who said that's kufr. He's high ranking scholar also in the madhab of Shafi'i. Yes, yes, it is not kufr, not, not. Kufr, not blasphemy. Did you understand? Did you hear me? I think I just said it like 10 times. The correct judgment about fabricating a hadith, just merely, I'm not talking about making something halal or haram, just merely fabricating a hadith is that it's haram. Here it is. I have the book here. Hold on. Bismillah. I'll read for you. What, what did Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani say? Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani said, Qal, wa kullu dhalika haramun bi ijma'i man yu'taddu bih. All of that, he means fabricating the hadiths, the details that he talked about. He said, all of that is haram by consensus. By the consensus of anyone who has any regard. He means, not some deviant people who said that you're allowed to fabricate. However, some of the karamis and some of the Sufis, fake Sufis, it was documented about them that they permitted fabrication. In the cases of encouraging doing the good and discouraging doing the bad. They said here in this case you can fabricate to encourage some about the Prophet to encourage someone to do good or discourage him from doing bad. And that's a mistake from whoever did so. Nasha'a an jahlin, that uh, its source is ignorance. Li anna targhiba wa targhiba min jumlati al ahkami shar'iya. Because encouraging the good and discouraging the bad is amongst the religious 
rules. Meaning, the religion already has that. The religion has that. You don't have to fabricate something about that. واتفقوا على أن تعمد الكذب على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من الكبائر And they have agreed that intentionally lying on the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is among the major sins وبالغ أبو محمد الجويني And Abu Muhammad الجويني exaggerated فَكَفَّرَ مَنْ تَعَمَّدَ الْكَذِبَ عَلَى النَّبِي And he deemed as a kafir who intentionally lied on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you notice what he said there? He said, بَالَغَ He went too far. He exaggerated by deeming that one a kafir. Any example you can think of, someone says, whoever does such and such has such and such reward. So he's fabricating that to encourage someone to do good. He says, the prophet said, whoever prays like this will have such and such reward. And he made it up. Or whoever does this has such and such punishment. And he made it up. That's haram, major sin. Is it clear? Do you have any other question there? Amin Rafiq. Our Shaykh agrees with Ibn Hajar al Asqalani. Shaykh Abdullah agrees with Ibn Hajar al Asqalani here about this case. Tayyip, moving on. The author said, And the false claim, making a false claim. Like, for example, you have carpets from China. And then you say, oh, why don't you come and buy some of my Persian carpets here? I have some nice Persian carpets for you. That's haram. What <laughs> And... The improper divorce. The improper divorce. Bid'i means innovated. And what it means in this context, bid'i, it means the divorce that does not comply with the sunnah. So just for some simple words, I'm saying improper. The improper divorce. So the divorce itself is valid, but it's being done improperly, which is what? Wahua, and it is, It is the divorce that was at the time or during the time of menstruation. What was during the situation? what was in the situation of menses. Yani, while she was menstruating, he divorced her while she's menstruating. That's an improper divorce. That's a divorce that does not comply with the sunnah. The divorce is valid though, she is divorced, but that was haram. Aw fi tuhrin jama'afi Or, he divorced her in a tuhr, a clean time. Jama'afihi, in which he had sexual intercourse with her. A clean time in which he had sexual intercourse with her. So then, how can he divorce her? What's the proper divorce? at sunni Sunni means here in compliance with the prophetic way and does not mean recommended here. at talaq sunni This does not mean recommended divorce. It means a proper divorce. How would that be when she's not menstruating 
And also, he did not have sexual intercourse with her during that non-menstruating time. So, if he wanted to divorce her, let's say she's menstruating and he wanted to divorce her. So what does he have to do? He has to wait till her menses goes off. So let's say her menses goes off and he wants to divorce her. So what should he do? Not have sexual intercourse with her. So that he can divorce her in a non-menstruating time without sexual intercourse. Which is going to be a red flag for her, by the way, if she has knowledge. She's going to say, huh, my period went off. Huh? He's not touching me. And also, uh, his behavior is, I don't know, seems kind of distant. Uh, uh, I think he wants to divorce me.